To AMG or not to AMG? That has always been the question. Do you want a mild-mannered luxury conveyance von Deutschland or do you want something that is completely bonkers that just so happens to piss off your left-leaning neighbors? For me, it's always been the latter, but now there is another choice. A uh, one that strikes a balance between prudence and the car guy nut job that you are, almost extending an olive branch to the guy next door who decorates his driveway with a Prius or, God help us, a Ford C Max. Okay, so let's clarify this difference between AMG and AMG Sport right at the top. Uh, AMG monster amounts of power in cars that are generally bigger with aids that uh, basically defy physics. That's AMG. Uh, AMG Sport is you take a regular kind of Mercedes and make it more of a hot rod. Not so much full fat hot rod, but a hot rod. So what does that mean here? Uh, that means it is a 3 liter twin turbo V6. Sounds good, right? Uh, well, what they've done here is they've fooled with the boost pressure over the C400. So it's effectively the same engine that was in the C400. But what they've done is they've brought the horsepower up to 362, and that comes in at 5,500 RPM, stays flat all the way to 6,000 RPM. But then there's the torque, which is our favorite here at this little show, and that is 384 pound-feet of torque, which comes in at a relatively low 2,000 RPM. So if you put all of that together, this, I would call this now a mid-sized car, a mid-sized performance sedan, goes 0 to 60 in 4.6 seconds, which sounds great, but how does this translate to out on the road? Okay, so for lack of a better term, this little car with like 330 horsepower was a pisser to drive. But now we're adding like 30 horsepower and I think even more torque. And I'll admit, going into this thing, I'm like, ah, AMG Sport, that's really nice. You're going to tweak the suspension, you're going to make it look a little cool and shift a couple of more AMGs, right? Uh, wrong. This thing, it's downright fast. I mean, I, you don't expect it, but it's downright fast. It's, it's not quite the C63. The C63, that thing, it pops you in the face with brass knuckles on. This, it slaps you across the face, but it's wearing a boxing glove. You know, let, let me put it to you another way. There's actually proof here. So there's a button here marked M. If I hit M, it'll actually hold the gears. It will let you, like, bounce off the red line or blow up your engine, whatever you want to do. But notice this. I'm going to go downshift and listen. Listen as we weave. <laughs> Did you hear that? It's got like a burble to it. Oh, so Mercedes calls that a controlled misfire. But but you and I, we're, we're car guys. We're misfits. We like things when they go wrong and they make noise and like explosions. So what you have here is an engine that makes the car faster, but actually blesses it with a personality. Friends, this is the point of the episode where you need to pay attention because we have a lot of technical bits to cover that lead to driving dynamics. So with that, do you remember the C400 we drove last year that was fitted with an optional suspension? I told you that should have been compulsory. Well, guess what? Someone has been listening to us because now it is fitted as standard to this car. To recap, it has five different settings. Eco, Comfort, Sport, Sport Plus, and Individual. So if you have driven an Audi in the past many years, or if you've been lucky enough to drive a Ford GT350, the individual setting basically, it decouples all the different mappings. So for example, if you want the dampers to be like Eco and the engine to be Sport Plus and the steering to be Comfort, not that you ever would, you could do that. So let's put all that aside. Now there are a couple of changes that are specific to the C450 Sport. Number one, it has specific steering knuckles to this model. Steering knuckles. It's like ball bearings. It's all ball bearings these days. And then that four-link suspension I told you about in the preview. Now put all that aside. Notice this car actually sits differently than a C400. There is a reason for that. It has negative camber, so for those of you that are rally racers or road racers or track day guys, you know you get more contact with the road. Granted, it wears your tires out a bit more, but you do get more contact with the road, which gives you a little bit more neutral handling. Now, 
you gotta stop the car if you're gonna get this better handling, right? Well, 12.6 in the rear, 14.2 in the front. And notice you get this very cool finish of silver on the calipers. Okay, so you're with me thus far? Well, if I haven't mentioned in this episode yet, this car, all-wheel drive. Now, it would stand to reason, if you have a car that is a performance car and it's all-wheel drive, you wanna send most of your power there. Well, guess what? Stuttgart did just that. 67% here, 33% here. Now, how do you get the power from here to there? Well, you do it with seven different gears. There's a couple of different tricks they did with this one. Um, believe it or not, there's a coasting mode in this thing, and you can actually hold the gears. So that is a hell of a lot of stuff we just covered. Now, what we must do is go out, put this on the road, and find out how it all works and turns into driving dynamics. Wow, that is a lot of bits going on underneath there with the computers and the engine and all that kind of stuff, but really, how does it work out here? Well, we've got this toggle switch down here. It's marked dynamic. Uh, and right now, I'm, of course, in Sport Plus, and I've got the button here engaged into manual. So actually, let's go back down to eco mode. Eco mode, that's just kind of hanging out, and oh, that's nice, we're driving the Mercedes, look at the scenery, the water's very pretty, and this is nice, this driving in North Carolina or Tennessee, wherever we are right now, right? Let's go to comfort. Uh, so we're gonna go back up here, and it's kind of more of the same, and we're not being as fuel efficient, but uh, I guess we're, we're talking with our Locust Valley Lockjaw and our Mercedes, and hopefully we'll be able to pick up uh, Buffy at the private school, right? That was terrible, I know. So let's switch to sport, right, and have some fun put our foot into it and the thing actually digs. Uh, there is less body roll in the rear. Uh, there's still a little pitch and squat in this one if I'm really being honest with the sport mode. But now let's go up to our version. Uh, this is the Sport Plus. Now if you remember in the C400, this is the mode that I said is compulsory. This is how you need to drive. So we have basically gone full fat on engine, transmission, steering, dampers, all that kind of good stuff, right? So now it's like you virtually have no pitch squat dive roll. I would even go so far as to saying it's very neutral handling, and that's where we get into this whole negative camber thing here. It's kind of funny when you say, oh, I've got a C-class with negative camber. It's like, I almost want to go to a cocktail party and say that, and people but look at me like I got three heads, but it's still neat to know that you've got it. Yes, there is an individual mode. I can change the different things here, and for me, I think the big uh, function of that is to be able to get uh, eco economical operations operation out of the engine, basically higher fuel economy while still keeping the suspension and the steering on the dynamic mode so you get the drive that you and I would want. That's, I love the way they decouple that. Get that? But wait, there's more. There's actually two things more. And sadly, to unpack the first one, we need to go back to comfort mode, uh, which is counterintuitive in this beautiful, like, back forest country road here in North Carolina. I just can't get over the stunning beauty of this area, but I digress. Uh, anyway, so we're going downhill, notice? Uh, this transmission, so it's seven speeds we talked about, it's torque converter. Uh, between 37 and 99 miles an hour, uh, the transmission will actually disengage from the resistance of the engine. So right now it's actually coasting. Neat little touch. So the last car we drove with an automatic that was like that was the Boxster, uh, the PDK. So in, it, whether it's a Boxster or 911, whatever, they will disengage. If the idea is it's one step above the eco stop start that you have over here that turns the engine on and off to improve the fuel economy even though you've got more power. But then somewhat related to that, so if we go back into Sport Plus mode, notice what happens. The engine automatically goes above 2,000 RPM, and that's kind of like its way of saying, uh, am Faden, it's trying to get your attention. You know, Achtung, uh, we are in Sport Plus mode. You know, that's kind of what it's saying. So it's giving you a warning that we're getting into Sport Plus mode. I don't know if we need it, but it's still cute. Uh, and then last but not least, you know how you get into one of these cars and it has all these adjustments to it, and then you get out of the car for like 10 minutes and come back in and it's back into like soft, like easy listening music mode? Uh, well, with this car, the way they set it up, uh, the engineers have changed the programming where it stays in the mode you last left it for four hours. 
So right now we're in Sport Plus and let's say I want to go into manual mode. If I got out of the car, went and had lunch, came back for two hours or after two hours, it's going to be in the same mode. That, thank you very much. Or shall I say, vielen Dank. And now for something completely different. Let's go back a couple of days when I first rolled into the volunteer state and look at two things. One, well, honestly, is a bit of a guilty pleasure of mine. And the second, um, if there is such a thing as a prudent AMG, well, let's look at some practicality. Something I don't think we've ever done in the six-year history of our little automotive colloquy here. Look at this. Red seatbelts, red stitching on the NV text, and sport seats. All standard in C450. Check out the cool wheels, too. Now, so we got one big bag in there full of sticks and mounting gear and sliders, all sorts of camera gear. Here is the cameras. This one here. Now let's see if the computer goes in there as well. It's like Zelda. Get it? <laughs> Zelda. Magic. Now before I let you guys go, we need to talk about this interior. How many times on this show do I go on and on and on about the importance of color and especially contrasting colors on cars like these? Obviously someone at Mercedes-Benz has been listening because look at this. Uh, I know in the preview episode I showed you a black interior with the red stitch, but this one, this is the Designio interior. The, the fancy model. I, I don't know how a German car manufacturer they came up with the term designio for the fancy version of the interior, but they did. Uh, and basically, what that means is this: this diamond quilt uh, stitching, which is awesome. And even the the offset of the single stitch here within the diamond quilt. And then look at the white piping here. And then talk about contrast. You've got the black dash. Uh, this beautiful like brown saddle here. And then the bees, the resistance. Look at the wood dash here. So I know I go on and on about wood dash, but this, there's two cool things about this. Do you guys remember back in the day of like the 19, the originally 80 uh, uh, SEL? That had a Zabrano wood dash. Granted, you had to go up to the SEC to get the burled walnut, but on those uh, SELs, they had, and, and other Mercedes, they had this Zabrano wood, but that was a horizontal pattern. This one is this vertical pattern, which is so cool and just accentuates the modernity of this shape here. This is what I mean about an interior and picking the right colors. The only thing that surprises me here is I don't know why someone would go to the trouble of, of specking this car out this way and not put a panoramic sunroof in it. I think when we get back to the hotel, I'm going to go find a can opener and fix that. So in summary, what do we got? Well, if we roll back to when we drove that C400 last year, there's really no nice way to put this. That car kind of knocked me on my ass. I didn't expect that kind of driving dynamics from that car. And here we're presented with kind of the same equation because this starts with the C400 as like the building block. Then they add more power, tweak the suspension bits, and yeah, there's cosmetic changes, but let's put that off to the side. Really, the thing that kind of tells you what's going on here is the exhaust burbles on a Mercedes C-Class. Who knew? And that is, that's kind of what this thing is. It's got a personality. It doesn't just knock you on your ass. It actually, it bites you in the ass, which you don't expect from a Mercedes. And with that, I want to leave you guys with a question. So this isn't just like the middle model or we said like just right in the preview episode. This is a totally different Mercedes because it gives you a personality. So my question to you is this. Do you want this kind of a personality from Mercedes-Benz? Because if you think about it, 20 years ago, there was a spectrum. There was sport side here, luxury here, and in the middle. Sport side was BMW, Mercedes was here, and Audi was right in the center. I mean, that was kind of the way it was from the beginning of performance car time, right? Well, now all of a sudden, Mercedes is like, no, 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 no. We want to go and play in the sport thing here, personality. And Audi is kind of like more closer to the sport, but BMW has got some luxury models over here. So everything's changing. So my question to you is this, is this the personality you want to see in a Mercedes? Let me know, is it the personality and what you like about it, what you don't like about it, 
and what you would change. Let me know in the comments below or via our social media, Moto Man TV, all one word, Moto Man TV, all one word, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And uh, I normally don't do this, but I want to prep you for an upcoming episode. So today, it is the C450, which is a C-Class with a personality. Um, in about two weeks, maybe three weeks, you and I are going to be driving a C-Class that's going to kill you. And that is the C63 Coupe. I'll see you in Spain.